If you've been experiencing a drop in performance with your Facebook ads, well, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Cedric, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three things that you can do to help the performance of your Facebook ads. So the three things that I'm gonna be talking about is the first one is actually tracking. So making sure that you're sending as much data uh, back to Facebook, and I'm gonna show you how to double check that. Uh, number two is the actual creative. So I'm gonna be sharing with you, uh, I think four designs that I've made in Canva that you can just literally access. It's gonna be completely free to download and all you have to do to make it work for your company is just upload your logo and then maybe change the headline, the background image, and then you can just download it and add that to your ad account and literally test them today. And then a the third thing is the ad account structure and what type of structure that I recommend for an ad account in 2024. With that being said, we've got lots to cover, so let's get right into it. So the first thing is tracking. So it's really important that you send as much data back to Facebook. So when someone makes a purchase or or uh, become a lead on your website, you wanna send that lead event back to Facebook, but you also wanna send as much data as possible, and that actually usually means that you're doing both browser and server-side tracking. Now, in case you just heard that, you're like, Cedric, I have no clue what you're talking about. Well, don't worry, I'm actually gonna show you how to just double check to, to make sure that you're doing uh, tracking via both the browser and server. And if you see that in your events manager, you're not doing that, then I actually have a bunch of videos showing you exactly how to set that up. You know, I'll leave those links in the description of this video. But uh, what you wanna do is you wanna go to events manager and you can navigate there by just clicking the little uh, hamburger menu here and you're gonna click on events manager. And then it's gonna bring you to a page like this. What I recommend that you do is just maybe like go here and select like a timestamp of like, let's say last seven days. Um, and then you're gonna see that this is gonna update, but then if you scroll down here, you're gonna see all your different events. And if you're an e-com store in this in the example here, that's actually a pixel that's installed on an e-com store. It's actually a Shopify store. Uh, that's why you see that you, you know we have the add to cart and say checkout and purchase event. If you are a service-based company, then most likely you know you're not going to see those events. You're going to see something like maybe like a lead event, because inside Ad Manager, you're right, you're optimizing for the leads. So what you want to do is open the event that you're optimizing for, right? So this, in my case, is probably like a purchase event because again, this is the pixel of an e-com store. But if you're a service-based company, it probably will be like a lead event. So open this uh, event right here. And what you want to see is you want to see two, like it's like a line chart here and you want to see two different lines. So you want to see the, the line here that's for server and the other line that's for browser. And then you can actually move your mouse here and then it's gonna, if it says multiple, then that means you're sending events via both the browser and the server and that's exactly what you want. So if you're going here and you're not seeing multiple, right? Let's say you're only seeing browser, well, this means that you're actually not using the Facebook conversion API. And that is a great way to actually help your performance. Like it doesn't require any cool creatives or, uh, you know, strategic planning or anything like that. All you have to do is set up the Facebook conversion API. And once it's set up, well, it's working, it's always kind of be working on the background. But in case you're not too sure, uh, you know, what that means and what it does, basically, browser tracking is just installing the regular Facebook pixel on your website. It is good, but it often gets blocked by Adblocker, Safari, and there's a lot of different things and uh, softwares that are actually preventing this to properly load on a website. And it also reduced the lifespan of the cookies, like, uh, like engines like Safari. So a workaround that to actually be able to track more users is to implement the Facebook conversion API, which is basically server-side tracking. And it's a little bit more complex to set up but it really, really helps and gives you a boost to track more users. And the reason that's important is that Facebook is an algorithm, right? And the more data you can send it, well, the better is gonna be able to, you know, just, well, first of all, when it receives that data, it creates a database and it can better understand who your ideal customer profile is so that when they're delivering your ads, they're delivering the ads to the right people. So that's why it's really important that you send as much data as possible. Think about like your pixel or your or just Facebook as like a partnership. So you wanna make sure that your partner has all the information that they potentially would need in order to target the right people. So that's why it's important to do both browser and server. So if you're going here and you're only seeing browser, then pretty simple, just go in the description of this video. And I've actually made a lot of different videos showing you how to set this up. I'll leave the link um, of a video that I made showing you how to set this up from scratch with Google Tag Manager. So. If you're using something like WordPress or you're, you know, maybe a custom HTML site, you're definitely gonna wanna watch that video. But if you're using Shopify, and then actually in this example, this is a Shopify store, there's actually a native integration that all you have to do is click the button and then it's gonna do both browser and server-side tracking for you. So it's really, really easy if you're a Shopify user. So 
I'll leave the link of the of these video in the description of this video. So the second thing are the creatives. And I would say that's probably the most important one. Uh, but I've made it really easy for you guys because I've designed uh, four different templates that all you have to do is just go upload your logo, upload some images and then change the headline. And you can literally just download them and start like testing those uh, image ads right away. So they are all hosted on Canva. If you're not familiar with Canva, it's a platform. It's like a drag and drop, like I guess image builder. And uh, it's completely free to use. They do have a paid plan, but to, to get access to this, like you don't need uh, a paid plan. Uh, it's actually, there's no opt-in or anything. The link is gonna be in the description of this video or maybe somewhere here on the screen. Uh, just click click that link. Again, there's no opt-in. You'll get access to that template right away. You just might need to create a Canva account if you don't have one. But again, it's free to use. And I mean, you should have a Canva account if you know you don't have like, uh, uh, like Photoshop or anything like that. So this is the first design here. And guys, this works whether you're a service-based company or e-com company. I know that a lot of these designs are more like, I mean, designed for like an e-com brand, but I've tested these designs with both service-based company and e-com companies. And this is something that actually works. I'm not just giving you guys something that I haven't tried. Like I've tried these designs and they work. Um, so the first one here, it's pretty simple to, to use. All you have to do is, up, well, first of all, download your images on Canva right here. And then once they're downloaded, you, all you have to do is just drag your images here. And then you can just click here to change the headline and then you can add a call action. And if you wanna you know, get some ideas, well, just look here, right? This is the brand, this is the images that they've uploaded, and then this is the headline that they added, right? So you can just recreate that here, upload your images, add your headline, and then all you have to do is go to the top here, click on download, make sure you download that as a PNG. And then I'm just gonna select uh, the, like the, the current page and then all I have to click is done and then download and then I would be downloading this image right here, right? But of course you wanna add uh, your images and your headline. The next one here is a testimonial uh, image ad. Those work really, really well. All you have to do is upload an image of your product or of your service. So like if, I don't know, you do countertops or if you do, I don't know, you install pools or if you're, you know, if you have a, I don't know, a photography studio, it doesn't matter. Just upload your background image, make sure it's a really good image. So something that, you know, when, you, when your customers or potential customers are gonna see it, they're gonna be like, oh wow, like that's, that's a cool headshot image. And uh, then just add a really good review. That's also really important. So just go on your website, maybe your Google My Business, and go ahead and grab like one of the best reviews that you have that are not too long. I would say like this review here is a bit too long. And uh, even this review here and like the example design, I would still say is a little bit too long. Try to find something that is a little bit like shorter. Um, and then just one more tweak that I would make is if it's now shorter, just go ahead and increase like the pixel size to maybe something that's like, I mean, maybe like 30 pixels just so that it's super easy to read. I'm gonna remove all of that just because again, this is more of like an example design, but once you have your review there, you can make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. Um, and then that's it, you do the same thing. You download it um, and you can try that as an ad. And one thing that we usually like to do is when we're testing a new creative, we'll make like a bunch of different variations. So all you have to do is like make your first variation and then just duplicate that. And then maybe you can, I don't know, try it with a different review maybe with a different background image, right? So you can create multiple variations. Um, all you have to do is again, upload your image, change the headline, add the review, duplicate it as many times as you want to make as many di uh, different variations as you want. This one here is like an us versus them. Again, this is a design that works really, really well. And uh, what you wanna do here is just go upload your logo and then this would be like your competitor. So there's a few different approach here. You can actually grab one of your real competitor, uh, but if you don't want that heat, then what you can do is just like, so just do what they did here. So it's like a non-name brand. And then they're just naming here the difference between like their competitors versus their product. And then you can do the same thing here. So upload your image. You can change those, uh, like those headlines here or those headings. And then same thing here, upload your your product or maybe if it's a service, you're comparing like, I don't know, maybe a job that someone else did. Again, it, let's say we're using countertop as an, as an example. So you install countertop. So just go ahead and maybe upload an image of someone that installed a countertop, but it's not even leveled and it's really, really off. And then on the right, it's like, you know, an image of your job. You can also, you know, you can redesign this, you can make this bigger, you can move things around. I'm just giving you guys like a concept and something that you can actually use right now, but feel free to, you know, 
change it around if you think it would look better in a certain way like changing the background color or anything like that so it matches more your like your brand uh but this concept here like the us versus them or the testimonial like i know it works because we use it every day and then uh the last one here that works really well if you're an e-com brand if you're having a special sale so the way it works is you have like your sale name so in this example you know right now i'm recording this it's summer so summer sale and then you have the price before the sale here you know little line so you basically should showing the compared price and then the new price then you have a picture of the product um and then a headline right here but again i'm going to use the countertop example or maybe even if you i don't know install bath for a living like show a price of let's say this is the starting price to install countertops before let's say i don't know it's four thousand dollars and now with the special price is three thousand twenty five right and that could potentially just be your starting price and uh, you can use this concept although it's made for a e com brand but then convert that for your service-based company you just have to use your imagination a little bit but you can easily convert an image that is designed more for an e com and make it work for your service-based companies and honestly i do this all the time like i'll work with the client that's in the e-com space and i'll find like a a concept that works really really well for them and then i actually will convert that into an ad that's for a service-based company and guess what it also performs really really well so you can use images that you find works well in one industry and bring that into another industry so if you're using things like the facebook ad library or other softwares like foreplay like you don't just need to look at your competitors for different like creatives ideas you can also look at like someone that is in a whole different industry just grab the concept and then convert that and make it work for your brand but that's yeah, so that would be the last uh, design here but guys yeah, so again you have access to this you don't need to opt in or anything the link is in the description of this video and the third thing is account simplification so the days of having like a lot of different campaigns and eight or ten different ad sets in one campaigns like those days are over so facebook actually calls this the performance five and i'll leave that link of this article in the description of this video they share a lot of information about it but basically what it means is let's say you're i don't know a supplement brand and you have like a lot of different ads that's in one campaign one targeting maybe um, maybe people that are interested in supplements people are interested in fitness people that are interested in eating healthy instead of having all these different ad sets well go ahead and group them. Group them into maybe one or two different ad set because what that's gonna do is gonna take care of the audience overlap. And an ad account structure that we usually like to follow at Vertex is we actually don't really use interest-based targeting or even lookalike or retargeting campaigns anymore. We do broad targeting. And the only way we can do that is because the tracking is set up correctly. That's why it was my point number one. And when, they're, when you're actually sending as much data as back to Facebook as possible, Facebook actually knows exactly who our customers are because they're seeing all those purchases or all those leads that are coming in. So you don't need to tell Facebook, hey, only show my ads to these people or only show my ads to this specific pool of people. Facebook already knows that. So you can actually work with Facebook with their algorithm to get a lower CPA. So simplifying your ad account structure where maybe you have like two campaigns. So one for like what we call it your main campaign. That's where you're spending the majority of your budget, which probably for the ad set there, I would do uh, maybe a broad targeting and then in, on the ad level maybe you have like three to four maybe max five ads inside that ad set and that would be it for my main campaign but then what i do with a lot of other ad accounts is i have a second campaign that's for testing and then i can actually use that campaign to make all my tests and then each test is created in a new ad set inside that campaign right and when we're testing usually we want to have like three to four different variations and by the way guys i've made a video showing you exactly how to uh, test campaigns and also how to structure like your ad accounts so if what I'm saying here doesn't really make sense, make sure that you go watch those videos because this can definitely help lower your CPA if you're not following like, you know, best practices in terms of like ad account structure. So there's specific ways of setting up your, your campaigns, but there's also another way to like test your different creatives because really at the end of the day, if you are doing broad targeting, you're removing one variable, which is like, testing like interest or lookalike so this means at the end of the day you're kind of just testing creatives and that's why creatives are really really important like you could actually be doing a traffic campaign which i don't recommend and but still get really good results if you have really good creatives and if your brand and your offer is really good so just something to, to you know to remember so with that being said if your tracking is set up correctly you have really solid creatives which you know i've given you four different designs that you can just go ahead and test out and number three you're following all the best practices to 
you know, creating your campaigns, your ad sets and your ads, then at this point, if you're still not seeing good results, you might want to think about your offer, maybe your brand, your messaging, and kind of like just go back to the drawing board because there's something else outside of Facebook ad that is probably contributing to your bad results on Facebook ads. So I would just go ahead and, you know, double check all of that. And who knows if you're a service based company, maybe it's something in your sales process, maybe that needs to be improved, or maybe it's just like your, your overall industry right now is, you know, it's on the downtrend. So those are just a bunch of different variables that you have to consider. But with those three things, like guaranteed, if you're not doing any of those three, like it's going to help. And uh, that's why I wanted to record this video to be able to help you guys. But uh, guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully uh, you've learned something. And if you did, please like go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, especially if you like the design that we did or you try one and actually performs well, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel because we release videos just like this every week. Bye for now.